Welcome back everyone. This is going to be my Black Widow movie review video. We finally have Marvel movies that you can go see this year. Black Widow is also coming to Disney Plus July 9th so you can watch it whichever way you want in a theater or on Disney Plus. Once the movie fully comes out and people have a chance to see it I will be doing full Easter egg videos breakdowns talking about the multiple post credit scenes so when you do see the movie do make sure that you stay after the credits. But if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe to get all those videos. We'll do a new giveaway for Disney Plus memberships. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave your favorite Black Widow moment from the earlier Marvel movies on the video. Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3 Black Widow. And just a heads up if you're not sure what's going on with all the Disney Plus stuff, but Black Widow is going to be the only Marvel movie that they premiere on Disney Plus. All the other Marvel Phase 4 movies are going to be released the normal way in theaters. But because I'm posting this about 10 days or so before the movie comes out most places I'm going to keep it as non-spoilery as possible especially early in the video here. But the Black Widow movie is basically Marvel's attempt at doing a Bourne film. It was trying to be Bourne Identity which is still my favorite Bourne movie but Black Widow never quite got to that level. Florence Pugh was amazing as Yelena Belova and Scarlett Johansson was as good as she's ever been. So if you're a big Black Widow stan before this you are really going to enjoy this movie. I will get into some of the things that I thought they did not do so well. There were a couple characters that I felt like were dramatically underserviced and I hope they fix that in future projects but I'll talk about that later in the video. The movie itself is meant to take place between the events of Captain America Civil War and before the events of Avengers Infinity War which is why her hair is the classic red in the movie and she is alive. For the most part the movie addresses her going back to wrap up her backstory things that she left unfinished when she defected to the United States and started working for Nick Fury, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Hawkeye. Basically give you all the backstory that they only hinted at in the other Marvel movies. There were plans to make a Black Muda movie a long time ago. Kevin Feige did try to make one when he originally should have made one back during Marvel Phase 2. It is like the finest Marvel Phase 2 movie brought to you during Marvel Phase 4. So you will feel a lot of that energy going into the film like wow it took this long for them to explain her backstory. But they do answer most of the biggest questions you've had about her since Iron Man 2. And they did develop this movie when they were working on Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So for better or worse there were a lot of things that they didn't do for Black Widow during Infinity War and Endgame that people complained about but they did things that way on purpose knowing that they'd be covering it during the Black Widow film. The same thing happened with Scarlet Witch and Vision's characters during Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. They knew that they were going to make the WandaVision series so there was a lot of stuff for her character and for Vision that they just decided to cut out of those movies and just basically copy and paste the storylines into WandaVision episodes. And it's not Marvel's first attempt at doing a prequel set movie in the timeline like they did Captain America the first Avenger so they did jump backwards in the timeline before this and Kevin Feige did say that they'd be open to doing that again like doing movies set in the past even though for the most part you expect new Marvel movies to push the timeline forward. There are parts of this film that do that I can't really talk too much about that without getting into spoilers. Cannot wait for the prequel movie about the rat from Avengers Endgame the most important rat in the history of the universe. But as a person who spends a lot of time watching Marvel movies, Marvel Disney Plus series, making videos about them, just analyzing everything way too much, I was happy with the way the movie answered a lot of the biggest questions about her character. And the funny thing is too, as much as they're selling this as a big action thrill ride like a big born action film, there's actually way more character work and just smaller moments of them just talking to each other, just having these family moments that they've been selling in all the trailers than you would expect. In fact there were actually far fewer action scenes than I would expect so it doesn't move quite as quickly as a traditional Bourne film. There are a couple of parts of the film that drag just a little bit because they do so much character work early on before they hit the third act so it does kind of hurt things at the end of the film because they sort of rush a lot of what happens at the end. Usually things like that can be solved by just doing it as say like a Disney Plus series so you get an extra couple of hours to do the character work and do all the action scenes. And I will compare a lot of this to Falcon and Winter Soldier. I feel like it has the same kind of energy that you see from Falcon and Winter Soldier, the same type of genres that they play in. It never gets crazy in the way that WandaVision or the Loki episodes do. It has the most in common just in general with Falcon and Winter Soldier. But I think the idea was is they were so dead set on doing Black Widow as a film because Scarlett Johansson has been this character for so long and she was this big A-list Avengers character for a long time and there have been so few female-led Marvel movies so far at least up to this point. They were like nope this is the only way we're going to do it. We're going to do it as a movie even if we have to rush a bunch of these parts of her story. Also a lot of issues that they run into with the character development during the movie could have been solved by just doing more with her in the Marvel films before this in phase 2 and phase 3. 
But like I said, that's not Kevin Feige's fault. He actually tried to do more with her character. He tried to do a Black Widow film a long time ago. But up until about Captain America Civil War, Marvel Studios was still under the purview of proper Marvel corporate with Isaac Perlmutter. You probably heard all the stories about how he vetoed all their attempts to make super weird films. He wouldn't even let Kevin Feige make a Black Panther film. It wasn't until after Captain America Civil War that Disney sort of separated Marvel Studios and let them do their own thing. That's why it took so long to get Black Panther and obviously now why it took so long to get the Black Widow film. Whereas under normal circumstances, we really should have been watching this story unfold right after Iron Man 2 came out and we met her for the first time. And just speaking about the way they treat the character, the way they write her during this film, I do feel like they build a lot on the good energy that the Russos set up for her in Captain America Winter Soldier. That's still probably one of my favorite Black Widow related films, even though she's more of a supporting character during that. That was really when the Black Widow character took off for me inside the MCU. But because they waited so long to release this, Scarlett Johansson has had 10 years to develop her character, so she's great in the movie as Natasha. It's kind of like watching Robert Downey Jr. come back from Infinity War and Avengers Endgame as Iron Man. They become their characters to the point where you know kind of exactly what you're going to get before you actually see the movies. They're so good as those characters at this point. The other real big home run that they hit with this project is Florence Pugh's casting as Yelena Belova. Before the movie came out, Scarlett Johansson was very clear that they were going to be passing the torch during the Black Widow film, passing the mantle, so to speak. So it's not a spoiler to say that Marvel does have plans for Yelena Belova in the MCU as the new Black Widow. We'll see that play out in the next couple of years, and I feel like she's probably one of the best parts of this movie, just in terms of characters. She's also one of the funniest parts of the movie, too. Like, she did a really great job with the action scenes, with the drama, with the whole sister aspect of it, because they are kind of like sisters inside the Black Widow program, and with the comedic beats that they give her character. It's a little bit like the energy you get from Black Widow in the earlier Avengers films when she's with the other Avengers. All the rest of the supporting cast is great in the movie too. David Harbour is Red Guardian, even though I feel like they didn't do enough with his character. He's kind of like the Russian version of Captain America. His backstory is similar to his backstory in the comics, with a couple changes to update his story for present day, because the MCU timeline kind of shifts forward from the comic book timeline. He's like a non-Hydra Russian super soldier. The Russian and Soviet government had their own super soldier program separate from the Hydra winter soldier program in Siberia. And I'll get into that more during my full breakdown and Easter egg videos. Most of what you see from him in the trailers is the kind of energy that you get from him in the movie. They use him mostly for comedic value in some really big action set pieces, but a lot of those action pieces are also played a little bit for comedy. He's like the dad bod version of Captain America, but I feel like he did work as the sort of surrogate father to Natasha. Rachel Weisz is also a fantastic actress, so she does a good job with what they give her in the film, but there really isn't that much of her in the film. Like even she and David Harper are relatively minor parts of this. It's really mostly about what's going on with Yelena Belova, with the Taskmaster character, in the Black Widow program in general. Don't worry, I will talk about Taskmaster in a second. There are going to be a lot of conversations happening about Taskmaster in the next couple of weeks. Just because they covered this in the trailers, I don't consider it a spoiler, but Yelena Belova and Natasha were raised like sisters in the Black Widow program. Red Guardian and Rachel Weisz's Melina Black Widow are sort of their surrogate father and mother. The way they pitched them in the film, the supporting cast, is they were meant to be her family before her Avengers family. So there are aspects of her backstory in the MCU that they've changed a lot from the comic book backstory, but if you've read a lot of Black Widow comics and you know her origin story, you will see a lot of familiar Easter eggs and references. And in service of telling that backstory, there are a lot of beats that they follow up on, like all the Budapest references in earlier Marvel movies, the whole thing with Dracoff's daughter and Loki during the first Avengers film, a lot of those types of moments that they do use the Black Widow film to pay off. I can't say too much about Taskmaster without getting into spoilers, because obviously they set it up to be this big twist during the film, but all the Taskmaster stuff was about what I expected going into the film after seeing all the trailer footage. So yes, Taskmaster is wildly different from comic book Taskmaster. It's more of a tech-based expression of his powers from the comics. And there's this whole thing with the marketing where they were trying to hide their identity. So the shocking reveal wasn't quite as shocking as Marvel probably thought it was going to be. It overall, I wasn't super happy with Taskmaster, even though they did give him all the best action fight scenes during the film. As you would expect them to give Taskmaster, at least they were able to do that pretty decently. Like, Black Widow does get a lot of really awesome fight scenes, but Taskmaster's fight scenes are next level, and obviously some of those scenes do happen with Taskmaster. So without giving away spoilers, there is a way Marvel can redeem the Taskmaster mantle in future Marvel Phase 4 projects. I hope that they take that opportunity. All is not lost if you're a big Taskmaster stan. 
But of all the things in the movie that I feel like didn't work as well as they could have, Taskmaster was probably the biggest. But that doesn't mean that it was bad by any means. It just means that it could have been much better. Taskmaster, of all the characters, was probably one of the most underdeveloped villains, which is a common theme of MCU movies. And as for the whole Disney Plus of it all, they keep saying that you have to see this movie in a theater. But just to compare it to one of the newer Disney Plus series, say like Falcon and Winter Soldier, because a lot of the action, the choreography is similar. Compared to Falcon and Winter Soldier, all the Black Widow action scenes, the choreography, the effects, the big set pieces were in order of magnitude bigger, like they did spend more money on them. So yes, if you can, you should try to see it on a big screen. But really, everything looks better in a movie theater at that scale. Even janky potato quality rips of 360p old TV shows would look better in a big movie theater. But you will be sitting through the movie thinking to yourself a couple times at least, they could have actually done this as a Disney Plus series and just break it into like a six or eight hour event. One thing that will make a lot of Black Widow fans happy though is they use the movie to address some of the biggest complaints that people had about her character and her storyline during Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. Most notably that she never really got any moments at the end of the film when they were eulogizing everyone. And despite the movie feeling kind of like an afterthought from a big Marvel phase perspective, it does come together as a really good time. It is a solid story so if you loved Black Widow before this, you will really enjoy the movie. But if you hated her character before or you didn't care about her before, it's not going to completely turn you around. The movie did exactly what it needed to do though. Without getting into big spoilers about the post credit scenes, the post credit scenes were almost exactly what I expected them to be. They do use them to connect the movie, which is set in the past, to the future Marvel Phase 4 stuff after Avengers Endgame, so make sure you do stay after the credits, wherever you're watching the movie. I talked a lot about Marvel Phase 4 connections during my Falcon and Winter Soldier videos and my other Black Widow trailer breakdown videos. Most of what I talked about during those ended up being what was in the movie. So there weren't any huge mind blowing surprises or anything like that, big twist that I wasn't expecting. Even if they had released the movie last year when they had planned to, none of that would have changed. Like they didn't radically alter any of the post credit scenes because they delayed the film. And I will do full videos for the post credit scenes when the movie comes out in a couple weeks. But once you do have a chance to see the movie, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. And please be careful about posting spoilers because most people will not have seen the movie when I'm releasing this video. But my full Loki episode 4 video will post next. Make sure you have alerts enabled for my channel so you don't miss that. Marvel also just added a brand new WandaVision post credit scene so you can click here to learn why they did that and what is different about the new post credit scene. And click here for my full Loki episode 3 video. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys tonight.